Montessori, Her Life and Work by E.M. Standing, Part 1, Chapter 1, and What You're Getting, Section 7, Montessori, Directress of an Orthophrenic School. It was through her interest in defective children that Montessori came in contact with the works of Jean Itard and Edouard Seguin, the two French doctors mentioned above, who had developed their lives to the education of defectives. In this way, her own institutions on the subject were strengthened. In 1899, at a pedagogical congress in Turin, Montessori delivered an address on moral education. In this, she expressed her belief that defective children were not extrasocial beings, but were entitled to the benefits of education as much as, if not more than, normal ones. Such an interest was aroused in what was then, in Italy, a novel point of view that Dr. Guido Bocelli, the Minister of Education, invited Dr. Montessori to give a series of lectures in Rome on the education of the feeble-minded. She complied with this request, and, as a result of this course, which laid the foundation stone of scientific pedagogy in Italy, there came into being a state orthophrenic school. This was placed under the direction of Dr. Montessori, a position which she held for two years, 1899 to 1901. To this were brought from various day schools in Rome all those children who were regarded as hopelessly deficient. Later on, to this same institution were transferred also all the idiot children from the insane asylums in Rome. During these two years, Montessori, with the help of her colleagues, prepared a group of teachers in a special method of observation and in the education of feeble-minded children. She also visited London and Paris with the object of studying all the then-known methods of dealing with such problems. Most important of all, upon her return, she gave herself up entirely to the actual teaching of the children herself. What his contemporary said of Sir Walter Raleigh, we can also say of Dr. Montessori, that she has always shown the capacity to toil terribly. All day long, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., she would spend with the children, and then at night she would sit up late to make notes, tabulate, compare, analyze, and reflect, and prepare new materials. Those two years of practice, she remarks quaintly, are indeed my first and only true degree in pedagogy.